Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. Our previous video in this series we looked at compound interest and the formula for that, and then we looked at the natural exponential, this number e that's very special to us in math. And we noticed that as we compounded more and more often in a year, when we took $1 at 100% interest, we got closer and closer to this number. But we're going to need to change the rate sometimes. The rate's not always going to be 100%, but this whole expression that's part of our compound interest formula in compounding interest gets closer and closer to the number e to the r, whatever your interest rate is. And remember, e is a number that's about 2.7. So if we are always compounding your interest, in other words, if we're continuously compounding, we're compounding so many times per year, you can't even count how many times we're compounding your interest, then this expression in the formula is going to end up getting closer and closer to the value e to your interest rate. So if you think about, we take that piece of our compound interest formula, and we take that out, and we put in its place e to the r, what it gets closer and closer to the more times we compound in a year, then it turns into this formula, a equals p times e to the rt, or as I call affectionately, a equals pert. So remember, p is just your starting amount, e is that natural exponential, the number that's about 2.71, R is going to be your interest rate as a decimal, and then T will be the amount of time, usually in years, unless specified otherwise. So let's do some work with continuous compounding here with interest. Let's find the ending balance if a $7,400 deposit is compounded continuously at 5% for six years. So we want to know if we're finding the ending balance, that means we're finding A. Our $7,400 deposit tells us that this amount is P. We're compounding continuously, which tells us right away. So when we see this compounded continuously, this is definitely the formula that we're using. Our rate is 5%, so this part here tells us that rate is equal to 0.05, and six years tells us that t is six. So I wanna solve for a. When my principal is 7,400, remember e is not something we plug in for, it's not a variable, it's a number, e to the 0 0.05 times 6. Now you'll notice what I did here. We need to put both R and T in parentheses in our exponent for E. It's possible if you just put E to the 0 0.05 and then put times 6, depending on the model of calculator that you have, it may think that R is the only thing in the exponent. So we have to make sure that we put parentheses around R times T in a lot of the models you might be using out there. So if we type this into our calculator correctly, we should get, rounding to two places, an answer of $9,988 and 96 cents. Let's look at an additional example here. We want to find the ending balance. So again, we're finding a, if a $10,000 deposit, so that is our P, is compounded continuously, those two words tell us use this formula here instead of the other compounding interest formula. Our rate is 3.1%, so R in our formula will be 0 0.031 and time is 30 months. Now our 30 months needs to be written in years, right? So if we want to figure this out, we could take 30 and divide by the number of months in a year, which is 12, and if we do that, that will give us that 30 months is actually 2.5 years. So if we plug into our formula, we'll get that A equals PERT becomes A equals 10,000 times E to the 0.031 times 2.5. If we type that into the calculator and we round to two places, we should get $10,805.82. Let's look at one that's just slightly different. This says find the deposit, so we're finding actually P this time, that will reach an accumulated value of 20,000. So my 20,000 is actually my A in the formula this time. Compounded continuously tells us that we're definitely using this formula. Our rate is 6%, so R in our formula will be 0.06, and our time is seven years, given to us nicely in years, so T will just be seven simply there. So if we plug this information to our A equals PERT equation, we get 20,000 for A this time, equals, we're solving for P, so that stays in the formula, times E to the 0 0.06 times 7. 
Now you'll notice here that what we're solving for is not by itself on one side of the equation, so we need to get it by itself. So to solve this equation for p, I'm going to go ahead and divide by the stuff over here with p so we don't have this anymore. So I do that on this side. I'm going to go ahead and do that on this side as well. So e to the 0 0.06 times 7 is what I will divide my 20,000 by. So now I just have p equals this. If we type this into our calculator, 20,000 divided by e to the 0 0.06 times 7, and again, make sure you put your 0 0.06 times 7 in parentheses, and we round to the nearest cent, then we will get 13,140.94, so 94 cents there. Okay everyone, hopefully this gives you a good idea of how to use your A equals PERT, your continuous compound interest formula. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.